Have you ever hoped that there was a way that you could see the goals in front of you that would inspire you in such a way that you would never forget to do the things that you're trying to do? Maybe it's your sense of smell or your sense of taste, but that's what we're going to talk about today. You know you're in love when you can't fall asleep because your reality is better than your dreams. Dr. Seuss. Long time ago, my friend and I got caught up in something called the kitchen of the mind. And that was something that was created by a fellow named Mike Vance. And he worked for Disney. He was the dean of Disney University. And his whole point was to get people to be creative, imaginative, and be able to visualize the things that the company or a particular team wants to do. And so he created something that was called the kitchen of the mind, which was basically setting up this environment that's designed to what they say to nourish your mind, to give you these activities that really help you to be creative and take the best advantages of all the things that your mind has to offer. And the reason I wanted to do this podcast was to talk a little bit about what the Kitchen of the Mind did for me and my friend, other than cause us to buy a lot of colorful notepaper and a million types of pens. It's something that we were so enchanted with that it got incorporated into our lives in so many ways. Hopefully it helps bring out the best in you, like it helped us get more creative about our thinking. And what's fun about it now is since the time that his Kitchen of the Mind idea came out, there's so many more things out there that you can do with your Kitchen of the Mind. The computers are so much better. The internet is so much better. And there's all sorts of neat tools and educational toys and learning systems that you could put in your kitchen of the mind and it would help nourish your activities to let you take the best advantage of all the things your own mind has to offer. He says that why should we live in a boring place when we can have this rich environment around us in our house, in our physical being that will help us achieve creativity? Why just have beige walls when you can have purple walls and you can have poster boards And you can have all these ideas that are around you so that you have the best types of creativity coming out of your mind. And even at the time that The Kitchen of the Mind was written, we have so many more things than we had even back then. We have electronic things, gaming systems, the internet, all these different types of technology tools that can help us to become even more creative with less of a cost. Maybe we can't paint our kitchen of the mind, our creative space in our house purple, but we could maybe look at things through our phone to help us create our most important future and to use our creativity to really show us the way. And so for my friend, when it comes to her kitchen of the mind, she has pictures all over her wall of all the things and people who inspire her, of all the things that are important to her. Some of them aren't necessarily related to goals are related to things that matter to her, that move her to act in the ways that she wants to act. And so having the pictures around, having the posters around, really inspires her to get to what she needs to do. She also has a million and one pens, note cards, and bulletin boards ready so that she can put up any idea that she has and structure them with these bulletin boards in any way that she sees fit. The important thing about bulletin boards, whether you do them in real life or you do them digitally, is they have that ability to place things anywhere, to draw different strings from this item to that item, to put this first. And if you thought that this was going to be the first thing and you discovered something else was going to be the first thing, bulletin boards are great because you can put something else first later. The first important thing when doing this, and my friend does a great job of this, is visualization. How can we use our visual skills to either help us accomplish our goals, to help us dream about our goals in a creative way? She has photos of the people and the charity work that she does all in front of her. So she never loses sight of those very important goals she has. For me, I use those photo boards to keep track of personal goals, my weight loss, my desire to have adventures in life, my desire to stay fit and healthy so that I can keep doing all the things that I want to do. So you have a lot of power to use the visual skills you have around us in order to keep going. So when you're looking at creating something using your vision, the first thing to do is use whatever talents you have. 
For example, if you're a fantastic drawer, you're artistically skilled, then go ahead and draw something. Do your art to help you remind yourself of your goals. If you're a photographer, take photos of the things that you want to do. I am not that person, so I have to do other methods. For example, when I visualize my goals or I visualize the people and the groups I care about, I have to take pictures off the internet. And if I want this board to be something I can hang up in a particular room, I have to print those things. Sometimes if you don't have a printer, you can go to many different kinds of local shops and then they have printers that for a small fee you can use to print things off. Sometimes it's just a matter of taking them out of old magazines and put them up on bulletin boards. Whatever way, either through your artistic skills or the artistic skills of websites that have graphic art, websites that have physical art, first think about what your big dream is. Get a visualization of it. Is it about what kind of house you live in? Is it about where you live? Is it about the kind of job you'll have? Find some sort of a picture representation of your dreams and goals. You may even want to, in the whole sense of kitchen of the mind, Even find toys that challenge your brain and make sure that you think about the goals you want to have. I have small toys. I have one of Melinda May from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And why did I pick her? Because she's tough and she's focused and she really goes after the things she wants. She is also someone who looks fantastic and has kept herself in great shape. And that's what I want to do for myself too. So Melinda May is a real reminder of the things that I want in my life. I also have the elderly gentleman from the movie Up because it reminds me that you can have an adventure all the time and not just to get stuck in your house. So even the small toys I have in my house are there to remind me of a goal I have in my real life. But that visual cue will help you do it. So once you get together a board, whether you're going to make it digital or you're going to make a physical bulletin board, Some things that you can put on there are your steps towards your goal. How are you going to get there? The reasons why you love that goal. What it is that you think is great about it. So if you had this dream of going to Iceland, you'd put pictures of it, of the Aurora Borealis, the fjords, the glaciers, the volcanoes, and all the amazing things that you would see in Iceland. And you'd put those on your digital or your physical board so you can remind yourself, why do I want to go to Iceland? You can put photos, you can put quotes, you can maybe even put pictures of yourself edited in that place so that it looks like you're there. You can put in particular pieces of words and then you want to really put this thing together in a visually appealing way because the idea about having this board is so that you can look at it all the time so that it can get you excited about what you want. A lot of people are great at this. They put them out in all this very interesting spaces so that it's spread out and it looks amazing. It's almost like a piece of art. And the fun thing about hobby stores these days is they sell all sorts of things that are great for putting your vision board together or your future board. It can be a cork board or it could even be one of these strings that you hang across your wall that have little clips on them. And each clip is a separate picture. And so that you can just string it along the top of your bedroom. You can put it in front of your mirror in your bathroom. There's all sorts of neat ideas that you can do. And you can Google these on the internet by looking at future board, goal board, or vision board to see what other creative things that people have done. But the whole point of putting this board together and gluing it together, pinning it together, or making it digital is to remind you of all the things that you dream of, to challenge you to go after the things you dream of, and to inspire you to keep going on those days when you just don't feel like going there anymore. You don't have to just think about it in terms of just a poster or just a bulletin board that you have. You can think about it as room themes, as decorations. You could take a whole room like your bedroom and turn it into a tropical wonderland so that you can visually see your goal every time you're there. The visual part of having the kitchen of the mind can be darn near anything that sparks your imagination with your eyes. So some apps that can help you get to your visual goal, whether you print them out or you just keep them in the digital world, I kind of recommend having both because sometimes it's nice to walk into my house and remember my goals without having to open up anything on my phone. When things are on my phone, 
They're very easy to ignore. But if I have posters of all the things I want in my life, pictures, bulletin boards, entire rooms decorated in a certain way, it's hard to ignore. While I'm not much of a person who likes to print things out or have physical copies of things, this is the one example where I think it's really important. But you can use digital tools to help you get there. There are two websites. One's called PicMonkey and the other one's called Canva. And they both have, first of all, a lot of photos and graphic elements that can help you visualize your board and put it together. They also have features in there that will help you lay out the board. So even if you don't have the skills to do it yourself, you can do it through these two apps. And of course, there's Pinterest and Instagram, which are other great ways of taking the things that really inspire you and help you put them in a particular way so that it can remind you of your goals. Again, a digital way, but still to help you remember. The app that I use, which is part of iOS, is called Corculus, and the link will be in my show notes. But Corculus is like having a gigantic digital bulletin board. You can put fake cork in it. You can just have it be blank. But it's so creative in what you can do because you can put pictures and words and draw strings and lines and move everything around and make your board bigger or smaller. So your creativity is always there exactly as you want it. And then you can put the whole thing out in a PDF. That will help you transport it around on your various digital devices so that you can carry it with you everywhere. And you could even print it instead of printing elements of it and putting it on a real bulletin board. Then there's a few apps out there. You can find them in your various phone stores. One is called VisuApp Vision Board. And it helps you to put together your own goals board through a digital iPhone sort of way. I believe it also has a Google app too. Nice thing about that kind of thing and for Corculus is if your goal changes a little bit, if you want to update some of the elements to your board, very easy to do. But what do we do about the other senses? What does your goal sound like? What does the sound of the water washing on the shore sound like? Maybe you can actually buy one of these little tiny sound recorders. You can find them on all sorts of digital stores. What you can do is take those little recordable sound modules that have a certain button on them, put those on your soundboard too. And maybe it sounds like the ocean. Maybe it sounds like a forest at night. Or maybe it sounds like Paris in the middle of a coffee shop. Make sure you appeal to your sounds as much as you appeal to your vision. Sometimes those sounds might even be your family or friends laughing with you in a room. Don't limit the sounds to the actual location. Think about sounds in terms of the people who are with you. You could create a sound file with your morning message. Hi, Jill. This is Jill. I hope you're enjoying your day. And don't forget that your adventurous life starts with a good workout and a good breakfast this morning. And just record some sort of a message for yourself You could even put it on this recordable sound module that you buy off the internet, or you can just put it on your phone and play it every morning while you're brushing your teeth. A lot of us are learners through sound. If you can have a reminder in an audio sense, it might just help you as much or more than just having it in a visual way. And then when you're losing faith through the day, you can just push the button on your recording or on your phone and listen to your cheer up message to yourself again. Maybe you can get a recording of your friends all cheering for you, saying, we know you can do it. Anything that helps you get there. Think about the smell of your goal. What's it going to smell like? Is it the smell of a beach or is it the smell of a campfire or is it the smell of a hot cup of coffee in Paris? But make sure you think about the smells. There's all sorts of different aromatherapies, candle things out there, that will help you incorporate the smell of your dream. This is something you can put in your kitchen of the mind or you can put it throughout your house because once you connect that this candle that smells like a cup of coffee is related to my trip to Paris where I'm going to get the best cup of coffee I've ever had, it'll help you remember every time you smell coffee to remember your goals and dreams. Then think about the taste. Is it the most amazing meal in Italy? Is it the taste of Icelandic yogurt on the shores of the ocean? Or is it the taste of a tropical drink on a beach? But just remember to incorporate those tastes that are there. And then think about the touch. What is this going to feel like? 
Are you going to be hugging your family? Are you going to be high-fiving with your friends on the beach? Are you going to feel the sand under your hand? You know, maybe you just want to get a little picture box with some sand in it so that maybe you can open it up and put your hand on the sand and then brush it off because sand gets everywhere. Think about what your goal is going to feel like when you're sitting on that beach. Anything that you can do to incorporate that touch will help you to use all the senses to remind you of your goals, to remind you what it's going to feel like when you have your goal. And so that using your senses will be there for you to keep encouraging you on the days you don't feel like doing it, make you better on the days you do feel like doing it. And the most important thing is to keep reminding you. I don't know if you're like me. My problem with my goals doesn't tend to be that I have bad days or that I even really particularly have good days. My problem is, is I tend to forget entirely about my goals. I don't even think about them. I could start with my day. I'll go and do my work. And then when I get done with work, I think, oh, what should I do now? Hmm, Let's watch some TV. Where was the part where I remembered what my goals were, that I remembered the things I wanted to do? So if you can have a tool that will just keep it in your head more often, the less chance you'll have that you'll just entirely forget about your goal for a day altogether. I had a friend that during the pandemic, she did an amazing thing with her kid, created all these adventures that were Bad facsimiles of what they were actually going to experience on their worldwide travel. It kept the dream alive and it kept the vision alive for them. They started by going to a pub in England and watching soccer. So they all got out in soccer outfits. They had a British pub meal and they pretended that they were in England. Then they went to Italy and they had this fantastic Italian meal and they decorated the area so it looked like Italy. They put an Italian flag up there. You could go to Greece and have the most amazing Greek food that's out there, have some olives and some wine. But I really admired my friend and what she did with her boy to keep that vision of them traveling around the world alive just by having these creative evenings that simulated what it would be like to have these occasions. It kept her kid happy. She looked happy. And I think it proved the power of using all your senses to try to encourage you to get your goals. Summary, create a kitchen of the mind. Pick a room that will help you be most creative and decorate it with all the tools that you need and all the decorations you have to make it the place where you can think most creatively about your life and your goals. Two. Create a way of visualizing what your dreams and goals are. That might be creating a digital board, or it might be creating a physical board, or even just a hanging with a bunch of clips, but some visual way so that you can remember your goals, what you look like in your goals, and the things that you dream of. You don't even have to do just one. You can make a bunch of them and put them throughout your house. Three, figure out what your goal will sound like. Is it the crashing waves at a beach? Is it the sound of a pub in Ireland? Come up with a way of having that sound around you to remind you what it's going to feel like to be in your goal. What is your vision going to smell like? Is it the smell of a campfire? Or is it the smell of food while you're walking through Cancun? Or maybe it's the smell of the restaurant you opened up with the brand new food that you planned on serving your customers. Four. Think about the taste of what your dream or vision is. Is it a particular meal? Is it a particular menu? Or is it a tropical drink? All the senses in to your visions and goals. Six, what does your goal feel like? Is it the hugs of the people around you? Is it the touch of sand? Or is it the dress you always dreamed of wearing? Remember to find a way to get the feel and the touch of your vision together. Challenge. Come up with one goal that you have and write down how you can incorporate all the senses into achieving your goals. You can remind yourself of your goal all the time. And our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Ratatouille. First of all, I'm a rat. Which means life is hard. And second, I have a highly developed sense of taste and smell. Flour, eggs, 
sugar. Hmm, vanilla bean. Oh, small twist of lemon. Oh, you can smell all that? You have a gift. This is Emil, my brother. He's easily impressed. So, you can smell ingredients. So what? This is my dad. He's never impressed. He also happens to be the leader of our clan. So what's wrong with having highly developed senses? Whoa, 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 don't eat that! What's going on here? Turns out that funny smell was rat poison. Suddenly Dad didn't think my talent was useless. I was feeling pretty good about my gift. See? Your senses are wonderful. Even if you're a rat, they can help you avoid rat poison. Good senses are important to have and important to use. All right, everyone, thanks so much. Please tell a friend about this podcast and let them know that they can listen to it on any of the podcast services. And have a great week.